Well, hello, crafty friends. It's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. Welcome to this week's episode of Christ and Crafting. I'm super excited about the project. I'm also really excited to share the story of Queen Esther and how she stepped out in faith, um, was a willing participant in God's perfect plan of redemption. And, um, and so we're going to be talking about the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14. So it should be really good. Uh, the craft project for today is going to be how to create a watercolor wash. And the fun part about it is that we're going to be doing that on plastic bags. Um, so I have done this project here at DIY Dreaming, something similar to this in the past, but I was always kind of disappointed in the results because it seemed like very often I was getting this muddy brown color, uh, but I've learned something new. So I'm going to tell you all about that too, and tips to not get a brown muddy mess. Um, Okay, so what this project involves some watercolor paper, and watercolor paper is available anywhere you buy craft supplies. This is what we're actually going to be using. My favorite is Canson brand, but my Walmart doesn't carry this brand anymore. Um, my favorite is this Canson brand cold press. Uh, 140 pound watercolor paper. It's thick, it um, is sturdy, and it has a really nice texture to it. So, since my Walmart doesn't carry this anymore, last time I was there, I picked up these two. These are Grumba Grumbacher, and they are uh, the same weight, 140 pounds, 30 GSL, 300, 300 GSL. Um, so I got this size, which is nine by 12, and then I also got some that is a smaller eight by eight at Walmart, not expensive at all. So this is what we'll be using. We're gonna do two, and then I'm gonna show you what the next step is of what you can do with it, and oh my word. If you're looking for something fun to do with your kids, grandkids, nieces and nephews, you know, or I don't know, anything <laughs> during the summer, this is a project that you could totally do with children and have a great result. So I just took two pieces out. Okay, then we're gonna be using a, a piece of plastic. I'm using these old Ziploc bags that I have used for a hundred different things. Um, we're gonna use a Sharpie marker and I'll show you what that's for. But the main part of what we're doing, creating the watercolor wash, is gonna be done with these Crayola markers. I got these at Walmart a few years ago uh, for just a few dollars. They're washable, um, I believe, and so these would be good to use with kids. We'll be using some water, I'll be misting it, and then we'll be using this beautiful stencil once the whole thing is dry. That is um, from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verse 14, and it says, Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. And we'll be using a little bit of black chalk paste. So that's the whole project at, in a glance. And um, let's start at the beginning. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to get your plastic bag, and you kind of want to look at, if you're going to stencil over the top of it or do some artwork over the top, you kind of want to look at the design. This is something I haven't done in the past, but I think it makes a huge difference. So this is the design, and basically what you're going to do is lay your bag over the top of it. I was kind of wishing that I would have had some newer bags, because these are pretty old and yucky. <laughs> but um, we didn't have any large slip black bags. Okay, and this design has some flowers off to the side. So I'm going to... I'm gonna basically draw on my plastic bag what I want the perimeter of my project to be. 
and this is a personal preference thing, which I'll show you the difference two different ways. And then I'm going to draw where my flowers are. And I'm using a Sharpie on one side of the bag. Okay. And this is what it looks like. Can you guys see that? Let me hold it up against some white paper. Okay. So this is the one that I've actually been using. And I just based it on the design of this stencil and also my personal preference. Um, this is the one I've been using that I made first off. I'm going to keep using the same one because this bag is a little bit less <laughs> worn out than the other one. Um, it totally depends on your design and my this design, this stencil has these beautiful flowers off to the side which are hard to see because I've used this stencil about five times already and I just barely got it. Um, okay, so I have my design drawn in Sharpie on this side. I'm going to be doing my watercolor wash on the opposite side so that when I flip it over, it'll be on the right side. And that'll make sense once I get a little bit further into it. All right. So, let me show you a little preview of a couple. We're going to be creating a watercolor wash, and these can be done in any color combination that you like. This is what mine looks like. These little purple blobs here are going to be where those flowers are in the design. And I made this one using blue and green and some purple. Okay, um, this is ultimately what it sort of looked like when I was finished. Isn't that beautiful? And you guys, I'm going to give probably most of these projects away. And to get your name in my hat, and I'll sign the back of them too. Um, to get your name in my hat to receive one of these watercolor projects, and I'm going to do multiple, um, just sprinkle this video and tell me in the comments that you sprinkled it to your social media. But look how pretty that turned out. The watercolor wash behind it, I think, is fabulous. Here's another color scheme that I used, and this was pink, orange, and a little bit of red with some blue. And personally, I like this one better, but it's just totally up to you. Here's a couple more that I made. Okay, the reason why I drew the um, this area on here was because when I was first practicing, I covered the whole entire paper. Don't look at this, that was a mistake. <laughs> um, I covered the whole entire paper from top to bottom, and I really figured out that I like it better when you have the margins that don't have the watercolor wash on it. So this was one. And then this was one that I did, which has the whole entire thing covered, but I wanted to experiment with using some white chalk paste. And it's beautiful, but you can hardly read it. So I would probably use black or dark gray. All right, so this is where we're going. And I'll show you this actual part when we get to it. All right, so I, this is the side that I drew my design on. And this is the opposite side. And I'm just gonna take my markers and I'm gonna continue on with this blue and green thing because it's what's, what I'm liking the most. And I'm gonna use purple. Let me look at my, okay, so who's familiar with the color wheel? Aw, Monica says you could totally frame them. Well, thank you. You guys, this is so easy. You're going to just be blown away. And um, it would be super fun to do with kids. Um, okay, so when I did this kind of a project in the past, I ended up with kind of muddy brown. And I wasn't sure why, and it was super frustrating. Okay, well, here's what happens. When you combine complementary colors on the color wheel, and I will get a picture of a color wheel, and I'll put it in the comments here so you can see what I'm talking about, um, then you get brown. So 
some of the complementary color combinations that you should not do are purple and yellow. Purple and yellow make brown. Orange and blue, they're on opposite sides of the color wheel, they make brown also, and red and green. So I'm going to be doing green and blue with a little bit of purple. And that, that is avoiding the brown situation. Um, so you don't want to do complementary colors. And um, that makes all the difference. All right, so I'm on the back of my plastic bag. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color where my little flowers are. And I'll hold this up in just a second to show you. I'm not doing any neat coloring. I'm just putting some color on the back of this plastic bag, roughly where the flowers will be. So, can you see what I've done? Then I'm gonna create the color wash across here, which is gonna be a combination of blue and green. And these are just Crayola markers, nothing fancy, seriously. So, and I'm going to go within my um, little marked off space because I like to have the margin around it like this. Okay, so, put some blue down. And I'm just laying, I'll pick this up in just a second. I'm just laying the side of my marker on my plastic bag the more you put on the darker your project will be can you guys see that I've just there we go that's better okay now I'm gonna add some green to it There's a lot of color combinations that would look great. And honestly, this is not a hard project. It's just one that you need to experiment with a little bit, which is what I've been doing for two hours. <laughs> we watched church on TV, um, which was great. And so I, I did this, worked on these before that and then after that. So I would be ready to come to you and show you. Okay, I think you can see what I'm talking about, how I've got this margin. All right, now comes the fun part and also the part that's a little bit intimidating. Hey, I don't know if I said any of my normal stuff, but if you like this project idea, please sprinkle. I'm gonna be giving away some of these pieces um, to a few people that sprinkle and I'll so if you sprinkle and say in the comments that you sprinkled, I'll put your name in my hat and I'll let you guys know which names I picked. Um, but feel free to sprinkle, feel free to ask questions, although I'm gonna go through everything. Um, what else? Tell me where you're watching from and... You could use a masking tape. Yes, that is a very good point. Alternatively, you could just use some painter's tape around the margins. But I don't, personally, I want the messy margins and not the super crisp. So if you want a super crisp margin, then use, um, use some masking tape or painter's tape. That was a very good point, thank you. Um, okay, so I'm gonna use my Magnolia DIY.com Mister. It um, just, and it's filled with water. This happens to be distilled water, but it doesn't have to be. And, oh no, I don't have any glasses in here. Oh well. <laughs> um, so then I'm just gonna mist my project. And this is where it takes a little practice because you want enough water on it that it, you'll be able to work with it, and not too much. All right, and what I have found 
is that it helps if you put a little mist on your paper as well before you get started. Just very light. Okay. When you have your uh, water misted on your plastic bag, it's going to start to like bead up. And I am just going to flip it over and position it. And I may have to come back and add some more water. So I've got it laying on top of my watercolor. And now you're just going to start manipulating the colors until you get the look that you like. Which some people might like it drier. Some people might like it more wet. Some people might like the colors more intense. It's totally personal preference. And once you start manipulating it, you can see that the colors start to mix in. Okay, and this is not a one-shot project. So when I lift my plastic bag up, here's a couple things that are gonna happen. One, I wish it looked exactly like this. No, it's not gonna look exactly like this, which is a shame, because this is really pretty right now. It's gonna be more soupy and wet and lighter. Um, and there may be areas that are dry that I really didn't get enough water on. So you can lift up parts of your bag and look, and then you can add a little more water, if you need to, mist it, and um, manipulate it. So I'm seeing right here that I have kind of a dry spot right here. And so I'm going to just put a little bit of water right on that area. And then I'm going to manipulate my marker in that area. And I see a dry spot right here. So I'm going to put a little bit of water there and just manipulate it with my finger. This is so much fun, you guys. Oh my gosh. Uh, so much fun. Okay, so you're going to need to have some paper towels. And uh, you can use a paintbrush if you find that there's an area that isn't blended to your liking, uh, but that's not necessary. Okay, so this is what my project looks like with the bag on it right now. Okay, be prepared. Ooh, it's actually very pretty. Oh my gosh. Okay, don't wipe all this stuff off just yet. This is what my project looks like right now. And I personally don't like all the little dark, like, runs. So I'm just going to take some paper towel and lightly dab off some of the excess in the run area. Okay, and if you're an actual artist of some sort and you're finding that you don't like the vocabulary that I'm using because I'm not. <laughs> so I don't know all the specific vocabulary for watercolor paintings or washes. Um, then just give me some grace <laughs> because this is actually very pretty. We're going to have to do another because I don't want to mess this up. And I, see how I like the messy margins. If I had to use painter's tape, it would be more crisp. All right, so let's set this one aside. Um, I could come back and lay my bag back over it. I could come back and put some more of any color that I wanted on it, mist it and lay it back over it and keep going that way. But I'm gonna start over. So I'm just gonna wipe off all of the watercolor markers and um, let's think let's do some different colors but I need to keep in mind not 
to combine any complementary colors because seriously, the muddy brown color that you get um, is not good looking. Okay, so okay, so I think maybe I'll try some pink and orange and add a little yellow for the flowers. We'll see. It could be wonderful or it could be just a mess, but this paper is not expensive. So it's not like there's a huge uh, consequence if you, you just hate it. And you can keep manipulating it and adding more, taking stuff off. You can spray your paper with water and blot certain areas. So what I like to do first is to color the flowers. So I'm gonna just color in these flowers in yellow. Going on here. And do protect your work surface. You guys, I'm so excited. I don't know, that's not the right word. Anyways, um, what I have to say about the Book of Esther is really, it's super inspiring to me. And I hope it will be to you too. So I really hope that you stay with me through this crafting part and into the Christ part. I really hope you will. Um, and if you have friends that like to craft or even, um, you know, people that you're friends with in social media, you know, very acquaintances, distance, Feel free to sprinkle, because they might really like this, and I think that this message could be inspiring for them as well. Okay, I'm going to use the pink, and I'm on the side of it. And I'm going all the way out to the margins that I drew, and I'm also filling in the space in between the flowers. A little bit and I'll hold this up in just a second to show you it's really hard to believe that this could become something that is pretty okay so here's the start of it the flowers I colored yellow and in case you missed you're wondering how did I get this design on the back it's just a sharpie on the other side which is going along with the stencil that I'm planning to use. But when this is finished, come back and watch on replay. And it'll all make sense. Okay, so now I'm gonna add some orange oops, into my, ooh, this, I forgot this marker's kind of dry. You may not get much orange. I need a new orange so I'll just try and then I'm going to add just a couple teeny little splashes of yellow okay I'll hold this up so you can see not pretty right now Okay, somebody who's much more of an artist just said to add my yellow to the red, and you can make orange that way. That is definitely true, but I'm going to just go with what I have right here. We'll see. Okay, so then I'm going to use my mister. It's a real fine mist. This is great. Um, I use this to add some uh, distilled water to my chalk paste when they start to get dry. I use it to clean off my work surface a lot. I'll spray it. Uh, with, this is distilled water in here, but um, I use it for a lot of different things besides misting plastic Ziploc bags. I think it's probably better to start out with not enough water on your plastic bag than too much. 
So I'm going to just start with that. And I'm going to mist my paper, my watercolor paper, which it's 140 pounds. That means something to you. This is not Canson brand. This is Grumbacher or Grumbacher brand. Um, I like the Canson better, and I feel like it was a little bit less expensive. But my Walmart did not have it when I was on the search, so I just went with what was next. Okay, I'm placing my plastic bag where I want it on my project. Let me see if I can make my camera lean for just a teeny bit more. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to just start manipulating it. Do the flowers first. This is one of those projects where you just start and do it, and you, as you're going along, you figure out what you like. And you figure out how much water you need, how much you need to mist it. Um, it's just something that you figure out as you're going along. Okay, and I'm noticing that there's a few areas where it's pretty dry. Let's see if I can hold this up without messing it up. Like right here, and maybe a little bit up through here. So I'm gonna just lift my bag and add a little bit of water to these different areas and manipulate it. I don't want it to look like scribbles of marker on watercolor paper. That's why I'm doing that. And then let's see over. Okay, so this is what it's looking like, and it's going to be beautiful. I just think I'm more partial to the green-blue combination. Okay, so this is what it looks like when I take my bag off, and you'll notice that there's a bunch of runs in different areas. I'm going to get a new paper towel, and I'm going to just blot with paper towel some of those big... Um, wet spots. And I'm going to show you how we can come back and add to it if we want. Okay, so this is what it's looking like right now, which is really pretty. I'm kind of thinking, oops, that we should come back and put a little bit of red in the flowers. That's what I was thinking. So I'm going to bring my bag back and I'm going to leave the bubbles that are on there, the little bit that's left over, except for the really big ones. And I'm going to get my red marker out. What do you guys think about this project so far? Oh, and by the way, thank you so much for all the stars. That's awesome. Uh, this is my favorite day of every week to craft, because I know I'm going to be doing Christ and crafting if I can do it live. And um, anyways, I hope, I hope you like it. So I just added a little bit of red to my flowers, and I'm going to flip the bag back over and lay it down roughly where my yellow flowers are. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to manipulate just a little bit. Let's see what some of these other little water drops can add. Okay, what I'm noticing right now is that this would bug me. So I'm going to add a little more, oops, what is this? 
add a little more, um, I don't know what that is, but I want to get it off because I don't want to get it on my paper. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more color to this area on my bag, which is going to be this bottom right corner, and then I'm going to lay it down and put it on top. So I drew some more on this corner. Let me show you on the back. And I'm going to mist it. And we'll lay it back down on my project. Just this one area. I'm just going to manipulate that. And now I'm going to blot off some of the excess. When you're, if you try this project, you may find a completely different approach works better for you. Um, so now I'm going to clean this off because I'm going to keep using this same plastic bag that I drew part of my design on, so I know would know on the other side what I would be wanting to do. Okay. So when, well dang, I do have something on my thing here. When your watercolor paper is wet, it will have a tendency to um, curl up. But when it dries, it will be flatter. So I'm gonna use my heat gun here. Julie says she is so trying this, you guys. This is, I mean, get a big pad of watercolor paper and give yourself two or three hours to play because it's seriously fun. Everything is unique. And, um, I mean, I could keep playing with this all day long if I didn't have other stuff that I needed to do. So I did, a hair dryer works as well. I did this side, now I'm going to flip it over. That got on there, I don't know what that is. This side of the paper is wet too. It just doesn't really show, but the water does soak into this watercolor paper. So as I'm drying this side, it is becoming more flat. I did and it's pretty also but I have several that are in this color wave including this one that I will finish after um, I'm not live anymore I'll dry them and stencil them and I'm gonna give um, everything but probably one away to people who will sprinkle this video to their social media so um, so feel free to sprinkle this video to your Facebook page or whatever social media you like. And Dixie says it will eventually completely flatten out. Yes, it will as it dries. I'm just speeding it along. Um, anyway, so if you want to have your name go in my hat for one of these pieces of art, um, sprinkle and then say sprinkle in the comments so I know. And I'll put the, all those names in my hat and we'll, I'll pick a couple. Get this thoroughly dry. 
dry before we move on to the next step. And as it completely dries, it will fully lay flat. I promise. Okay, so this is going to be where I'm going to put this stencil. And these flowers right here are going to go right here. And I was fiddling around thinking about all the amazing projects you could do with this stencil. And look how pretty those flowers are. This is a piece of um, canvas deck fabric from Walmart, and I just used some black ink. And I'm gonna make something out of it. I'm just not sure what. But I wanted to just show you, because it's hard to see how beautiful these flowers are in this stencil. They're fa fabulous. Okay, um, I am going to, this is my stencil which I wrote what it was called on the back, and I spelled the word perhaps wrong. It doesn't matter. Um, and so I'm going to fuzz it just a little bit, probably just once, on my uh, tacky towel. You could alternatively fuzz your stencil on your shirt or on a pair of jeans or something like that. Uh, if your stencil is brand spanking new, then you're going to need to really, really fuzz it before you use it on paper because these are so sticky and sometimes they can pull up the top layer of your paper, which you don't want it to do that. So I've already used this about five or six times um, and washed it in between each one. So I'm good to go. Okay, and then I need to make sure that my paper's turned the right way so that this flower area is in the right spot. And I'm just going to apply my stencil here. I might use a little bit of tape to hold it down because this, um, this paper is still a little bit wet. You know what? I'm going to be cautious. Let's give it some more heat and let it get a little bit more dry. So tell me what you think in the comments. And who knew about the color wheel? That when you mix complementary colors, like green and red, yellow and purple, or orange and blue, you get brown. And it's not an attractive brown. Thank you, Kathy. making me hot. I'm sweating. <laughs> so plus my lights make this room really hot. So I'm going to turn on my fan and um, we're going to do this. Ideally it would be better to let your paper dry a little bit more than what I'm doing right now but I'm just so eager to see this. I am not patient. Okay, so I'm just putting it on there, and I'm just going to use some black chalk paste, which is from MagnoliaDIY.com, and a little stir. And I'm going to put some gloves on here. And get this small kind of squeegee. And I'm going to do the areas first where it's not seeming to want to lay down flat. I'm 
My stencil hasn't lost its stick. I think it's just that my paper's still a little bit wet. So I'm gonna apply my chalk paste and I'm gonna try not to keep going over and over. I just wanna remove the big globs. I'll hold this up in just a second and show you what it's looking like. Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, sometimes we just think, oh, well, this was a pretty big thing that she was created for because uh, she actually is one of the people who participated in God's plan of redemption for all humankind through his son, Jesus Christ, who was a Jew. And um, he was a Jewish person. And that is what this Queen Esther, uh, by the actions that we'll talk about in a minute, what she did was she prevented the Jewish nation from all being killed. That's what it looks like. It's so pretty, and you know what? My flowers are not on the yellow spots, but that does not matter one single bit. It really doesn't. I'm just throwing my stencil in a tub of water over here, and I'm up my hands. Of course, I have black chalk paste all over. I don't want to get that on here. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. This is. A, such a beautiful stencil, and B, this technique is amazing. Give me some hearts or some thumbs or put some hearts in the comments if you like this. I don't know. I was thinking initially that I didn't like the orange and pink as well with the yellow flowers. I think the reason why I didn't like it as much is because I didn't have this messy margin. And I think that messy margin adds a lot. I don't know. It's, and, and this one is beautiful too, because it has that messy margin. It's, it's just a, a matter of a little practice. So just to review, I'm just using a old, already used many times at black bag, and I used my Sharpie to kind of draw the design on one side, and then we put our, uh, our Crayola markers on the other side. Get everything close up here and get my chair and my Bible out. Um, and the markers that we used are just these. They're kids. They're Crayola markers. There's absolutely nothing fancy about this project and you just get such a beautiful effect. So I got these at Walmart a few years ago. And I don't remember if they were in the craft section or if they were in the school supply section. This is what they look like. If you have any kind of markers at home, I would think that you could probably use those. And, um, so these are the other two that I've made that I will finish up and stencil. This is what that bag looks like. Well, this is the other one. So I just basically drew it on the stencil and then do color on the other side. And um, I'm using 140 pound watercolor paper. Computer paper, craft paper, scrapbook paper, those are not gonna work. You have to have watercolor paper. And the thicker, the better, really. Um, so, okay. Give myself a little space here. So this um, idea for this project, God is 
just so amazing how he get rid of this blue mat. How he this is not me, you guys. The crafting is for sure. But that's based on the talents and skills that God decided to give me. Um, but this craft came to me last night in the middle of the night, like they do sometimes, often, when I was not sleeping and I was thinking about this verse from the book of Esther. And yet I have to get my glasses because I have to be able to see. So hang on. So sorry. Where are they? laid this um, idea on my heart, and he's so good. He reminded me of a couple of different things from my own life that can apply, and I bet you you can relate to. So the verses we're going to be using are Esther 4, 13 and 14, and the book of Job, chapter 42, and I believe it's verse 2. Um, so let me pray. And then we will hop into our project. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for Christ and crafting. Thank you for the, the gift that you've given me of being able to do this on Sundays. Uh, I love your word, Father, and I love talking about it. And I love sharing my impressions of what you're saying to me through your word. And this is really probably one of the biggest blessings of my whole entire life that I can do this. So I just thank you so much for that. Um, and I thank you for all these people who are watching now live, live or on replay later. And I just pray that you'll give me the words to say the things that you would like me to say to convey the ideas that you would like me to convey and that it will be encouraging and inspiring for the people out there watching. So, Holy Spirit, just guide my words and help them to land where you would have them land. And I pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, <clears throat> I have four pages of notes today. As believers, this is what I believe. As believers, we are all God's servants. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you have trusted in Jesus Christ's death and resurrection as a payment for your sin um, to put you in right standing with God, if you have made that decision for Christ, as believers, we are God's servants. Each one of us has been planted in a particular place on the earth during a particular time with specific um, God-given talents, fruits of the Spirit, interests. Each one of us have, have those because we, were, we are all made, we were all knit together in our mother's wombs by God. And he knew in advance, he created us for certain things, he knew in advance all the days of our life were written before the in the Lamb's Book of Life before the first one even came to pass. So he knew in, in advance what those would be. Um, so we are all God's servants, and we can be used by God in the unfolding of his perfect plan of redemption if we are willing. So that's my question to you as we start. Are you willing? Am I willing? Are we willing to be uh, God's servants? To be participants in God's plan? 
So the book of Esther, if you've never sat down to read it, it is not very long. There are 10 chapters. You could read the whole thing start to finish in under an hour, probably shorter than that. Um, it's really interesting. It was written sometime around 470 BC, before Christ. Um, it is interesting because this is a book in the Bible that does not specifically mention God. Although you can see God's presence through everything that happened in this book, um, if you're looking. Um, so it's, this book is about the interplay between God's sovereignty and human will. And that's why I keep saying, are we willing, our human will, are we willing to be used by God? Um, and the circumstances that all came together for, the, the, for Esther to be in this position really could have only been orchestrated by God. I mean, oh, there's so many different things that happen. And um, it's the story, really, of this young Jewish orphan and her uncle, Mordecai, and the, the king of this area of the world. Um, so it's basically telling the story about how this young Jewish orphan came to be queen and how she saved the entire Jew Jewish nation from being destroyed. And the Jewish nation was how God had planned, his perfect plan to bring about redemption for the whole world. So, um, through the, the birth, life, and death of his son, Jesus Christ, who was a Jewish person. So, um, this is such an interesting book, and um, you should read it. <laughs> you really should. The key verse in this whole book, and I had it highlighted in pink in my Bible, is um, chapter 4, verse 14. So, let me read that. And then we will talk about this. Okay, I'm going to back up to part of verse 13. And this is Mordecai, who is the uncle of this um, now queen, Jewish orphan, who had not told the king what her uh, nationality or background was. So he did not know. Okay, and there's this uh, order for all of the Jews in this area and in the areas around it to be killed. Uh, there's this order in place. Uh, so, this is what her uncle Mordecai says to her. Do not think that because you are in the king's house as a queen, you alone of all the Jews will escape. He's telling her not to think that she will be free from being killed um, according to this order that had been put into place. Okay, and then he says, For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. And I want to talk about that. But you and your father's family will perish. So he's telling her, um, that she should not remain silent. And also he's telling her to not let it go to her head that God will achieve his ultimate plan one way or another through another willing servant or another set of circumstances. But um, if she keeps silent, then the Jews will be killed and so will she and her family. Okay, so then the, the key verse here is, Mordecai says, and who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Uh, this is the New International Version, uh, translation of the Bible. It's translated slightly different in different translations. And this one says, Perhaps you were created for such a time as this. 
that essentially says the same thing, that who knows but that you have come to royal position to become queen. She was a Jewish orphan <laughs> for such a time as this. So that's the main thought in this uh, book of Esther. Okay, so Esther was really, and I think we can compare her situation to ours a lot of the time, although the consequences of what, whether we choose to be willing or not, are not as they could be. I mean, who knows? But they're not as enormous as um, allowing God to bring his uh, plan of redemption through his son Jesus Christ, through the line of the Jewish nation. They're maybe not that huge, but she didn't know that either. So she was in a scary situation, and it felt like life or death to her, and life or death to the people around her. And because of the customs and how kings interacted with their wives, essentially the king had to give the wife permission to speak or to ask for anything, and if the wife disobeyed or, or spoke without that permission, then she could be killed right then and there. So this was scary. Um, the Jews, there was an order to annihilate all of the Jews. And she was a Jew, and the king didn't know that yet. But if she didn't follow the king's lead, then she could be killed for speaking out of turn to her husband, the king. So she must have felt so uncertain about what to do. She probably felt very unprepared. And of course, she had no idea what the ultimate consequence would be. And we're like that a lot of the time. We feel scared. Maybe not for our life, but we feel scared. We feel uncertain. We feel unprepared. We don't know. We can't see the, we can't see the big picture because we're in a point in time. And we have these human brains. So we cannot see as God sees. But the thing about Esther is that she was willing. Um, and the thing I want to point out about her is that she was blessed immensely because of her willingness to do what she did. Um, she survived. So the king did not kill her for speaking out of turn. Her family survived. Her uncle Mordecai rose to be like the second in charge of the whole kingdom. Um, he was not hung on the gallows as one of the other players in this book had planned. And she took part, Esther, took part in God's perfect plan of redeeming all humankind to himself through Jesus Christ. Um, the other thing, the other way that she is blessed is it's like 2,400 or 2,500 years later and we're still talking about her. Um, and she's in the Bible. Uh, so she was so blessed for being a willing servant. So one thing I wanted to point out here um, is that God does not need us to do any specific thing to be able to carry out his perfect plan. So we got to stay humble and not start thinking that God needs us because he doesn't. Uh, if we are unwilling, if God had a, a part for us in his plan, but we are unwilling, then he will find another willing servant or he will find an alternative way to achieve his purpose and his plan. So it's not about us. He doesn't need us. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. He did not need Esther to move his plan forward. Um, so let's keep that in mind. The other thing um, is that God, his plans cannot be thwarted. I love that word, thwarted. Okay, I'm taking that from the book of Job, which is the next book right after Esther, chapter 42, verse 2. I can get there. And 
And um, so what this says in this book is that God is in control and no plan of God's can be thwarted by us. And thwarted just sounds like, uh, you know, we can't mess God's plan up. We can't. Uh, he doesn't need us, so we need to stay humble and feel blessed to be part in any small way in any part of his plan because he graciously allows us to be part of his plan for things that are big and small. And um, we only get to play that part in God's plan if we are willing. So if you or I, I know this is true for me, are afraid, if fear is preventing us from being willing servants, then we need to remember this catchphrase, which I've said many times, but I'm going to add something to it. And I thought this exact same thing about, gosh, 15 years or more ago, when I was asked to be a small group leader, a core group leader in my community Bible study. I was afraid. But God does not call the equipped. He equips the called. But he equips the called people who say yes. And thankfully, I mean, that's just one small thing that I can think of. Thankfully, I was willing. I was scared. I felt unprepared. I didn't know what to anticipate. And I didn't know what the eternal consequences would be of becoming a core group leader. But I have been so blessed since then, since I, I stepped out. Um, even though I seriously felt like I was not prepared to do that. Um, I have been so blessed by that. So God doesn't call the people who are skilled necessarily or prepared or competent necessarily, but he gives those things to the people that he calls who say yes, who are willing. Um, he's done the exact same thing I mean, in so many places in my life, and I'm sure you're thinking of things as well. But this is just one example. Um, I've been doing this crafting thing on social media for a few years. And at a certain point, I really felt God calling me. I have been sprinkling my faith in it a little bit, but I felt called to go into the Bible. And I was afraid. Oh my gosh. I was afraid of what would happen. And for sure I got some negative reactions to it. People saying, you have got to stop talking about religion. This is not religion. <laughs> this is, it's not a religious experience. It's me sharing my faith and sharing God's word. So I felt so scared to do that. But I was willing and I started. And then... Oh my gosh. Then, probably six months later, I felt God calling me to pray out loud here on Facebook before I started the Christ part of this and at the end. And oh my gosh. Am I a great prayer? No. I'm self conscious about that for sure. And I was scared <laughs> and just didn't know how I would feel, but I was willing. And I have been so blessed uh, by doing that. So I hope that these two little examples um, of ways that I have been called to be part of God's plan, um, and I was willing, that they have inspired you because, um, you know, we are all um, what did I say at the start? What was the 
We are all God's servants. And each one of us has been planted in a particular place and time with specific God-given talents and interests to be used by God in the unfolding of his plan of redemption. But are we willing? Um, so I just wanted to summarize by reminding myself and you also that um, God's plans cannot be thwarted. So if you're not willing, it's not like God will be unable. He doesn't really need us, so stay humble. Um, but he graciously allows us to participate. And in doing that, we are so blessed. Uh, but he's a gentleman. He doesn't force us to do anything. He doesn't even force us to recognize that he is who he is. It's our choice. Um, and it's our choice to participate or not. Um, so I, I hope this encourages you to listen to the Holy Spirit prompting you for opportunities where you really feel small and big. I mean, they come all day, every day. And then the big ones come here and there. But listen and watch for opportunities to participate in God's unfolding plan, um, be ready to surrender our will, your will, your plans for a much better plan for God's plans. Um, adopt the attitude of a willing servant and say yes, and you will be so blessed in doing that. Um, so, I cannot wait to sit down and read all of your comments. Um, that just means so much to me. Let me tell you about my Bible real quick, because I seriously believe that every Christ follower, every believer needs to have a paper Bible. So, what I've been reading out of is my Life Application Study Bible from about 20 or 25 years ago. It's nothing fancy, but it's a life application study Bible, and it's in, mine is in the New International Translation. Um, and I have recorded my life and my interactions with God. I've scribbled throughout this. But what is so great about a life application study Bible is sometimes it's just it's hard to understand. And they have notes that are so helpful to explain, you know, what the circumstances were, who the players were, what was going on in the culture at that time, um, that just make it easier to understand. Um, so I really completely believe that it's important for every Christ follower, for every believer, to have a paper Bible that you can actually read, yes, looking at the Bible online, on a device, your iPad, your computer, your iPhone, your Android. That's good, but there's no substitute for a paper Bible. So if you don't have one, I encourage you to get one. Choose one in the translation that speaks the most directly to you, and you'll know it. Um, my husband bought me this Bible in the NIV translation. I probably asked him for an NIV Bible. Um, and so that really is what I have grown up in my faith in was the NIV. But if it's King James for you, if it's the message, if it's the English Standard Version, whatever that is. And if you need a large print Bible, you can get a life application study Bible that's a large print. I wish I had that now that my eyes are older, but I can't trade in my life that's in this for larger print at this point. Um, so there is a online store where you can order a life application study Bible, and I would be glad to give you the link for that. And just so you know, I don't have anything to do with it. I don't make any commissions off of that or anything. I just want you to be able to hold God's word in your hand and read it on paper. So 
So let me know if you want a link to that. Um, uh, let's see what else. Oh, I'm going to pray. <laughs> and um, if you want a link or information about this stencil that we used, just say stencil or link for something. And if you want the Bible information, say Bible. And I will get that for you ASAP. Um, so, okay. So, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be your willing servant. I don't surrender my will in everything, Lord, and I'm sorry about that. Just like other people out there, I'm sure sometimes I have a hard time surrendering. Often I have a hard time surrendering. But Lord, I praise you for the times that I did surrender to be a willing servant, to be a participant in your plan and for how you blessed me as a result of that. And I want that for everyone out there. Uh, and I know you do too, Lord. So I just pray that this message um, will have inspired, encouraged people to look for opportunities, to listen to the Holy Spirit's prompts, to be willing to put their own plans aside, to be willing to be afraid, uncertain, feel unprepared, but still be willing to step out just like Queen Esther did in the book of Esther and how she, in a very, very much larger way than you probably would call any one of us now, she participated in your plan of redemption for all mankind by helping to prevent the entire Jewish nation from being killed. So I thank you that all these 2,400 years or 2,500 years later, we can read about her in your word and um, we can learn from this. And uh, Lord, I just thank you for that. Um, and I want that for myself more. And I want that for these people who are watching more as well. Lord, um, I do want to lift up the people out there that are um, hurting, uh, that have trials, troubles, things happening in their life. And we all have that because we live in a fallen world. But while I don't know anything about those things in other people's life, you do. And I just pray that you'll wrap your loving arms around those people going through things. Let them feel that you are there. Let them feel that you love them. Because you do. It's just a matter of whether we are able to sense it. So I just pray that you will be working your plan through our lives, through us, parts of us, as your willing servants. And I lift up all the prayer requests out there um, because you do love those people. So you are an amazing God. You have the perfect plan. You can see from the beginning to the end and every part in between. And we cannot. Um, so, thank you, Lord, for however you allow us to be part of your plan. Help us to be willing. And I pray all of these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alrighty, I know this has been long, uh, but I am inspired by what I, the verses that I've just shared, and I hope that you are too. And I hope you're also inspired to try some of these watercolor, what did I call them? Where's my piece of paper? Watercolor washes on um, just your basic watercolor paper using Crayola marker.
markers, and a plastic bag. Um, so if you missed the beginning, uh, feel free to come back and re-watch it. If you missed the end, uh, the most important, the best part, the Christ part, feel free to come back and watch from the middle to the end. And if you have friends, family, acquaintances out there on social media that you think would be blessed uh, by either the craft project or the Christ part, feel free to sprinkle. I am going to be giving, I'm going to make two more using these. And I'm going to be giving a bunch of them away to people who sprinkle. So sprinkle and then tell me in the comments that you sprinkle. And I'll put your name in my hat and I'll let you know later whose names I pulled. So have a blessed rest of your day and I will see you guys tomorrow. I don't know what we'll be doing, but I do have multiple things in the works. I'm looking around my craft room. Uh, it'll most likely be something that'll be quick and simple, that you don't have to be an artist or an expert crafter or have you know professional tools to do. It'll be affordable. It'll be sometimes a little different and it will almost always either involve faith, family, or flowers. All right, I hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.